the atomic triangle atomic punks versus atomic punks I painted that in 1994 From that to this. When I was in the hospital, that's my 1950s tripod. When I was in the hospital, I had a dream about this day. I, re I really did. I want to show you guys something. See those cards? Sorry about that. Anyway, every one of those cards are from people that I had never ever met in my life at the time. This is my art studio right here. While I was in the hospital, those are from every corner of the earth. Total strangers, people from my YouTube, it just shows you. That's why I have hope, that's why I never give up. There are so many intelligent, dynamic, impassioned, beautiful people out there. And when I go off on a demographic of people like a baby boomer, if you're too ignorant to realize that I'm talking in the aggregate, then so be it. I'm not talking individually. I mean, I love so many of you people. I mean, look at everything you've done for me. I want to read one here. When I was in the hospital, I read this before. One of my videos from when I'm in the hospital, I was very, very, and I mean, I was critical condition when I read this poem off this card. I want to read it again. The oak tree. I hope I don't start crying. Let me grab my glasses. Sorry. Where did I put them? Uh, I'll read them without it. We'll see how my eyes are getting better. The chemo really has done a number on my eyes. Really done a number on my eyes. Oh, these are so cool. So many of them so cool. I thought when I get out, one day I'm going to be back at the house and I'm going to make a little totem pole out of them. The weary wind gave up and spoke. How can you still be standing, Oak? The oak tree said. I know that you can break each branch of mine in two, carry every leaf away, shake my limbs and make me sway, but I have roots stretched into the earth, growing stronger since my birth. You'll never touch them, for you see, they're the deepest part of me. Until the day, I wasn't sure of just how much I could endure. But now I've found, with thanks to you, I'm stronger than I ever knew. When I read that, it was a YouTube viewer that sent me that. You know, I was admitted on 11-11. When that card came in that day, and the old volunteer, she came up, and she'd come up every morning, you know, and my personal nurse, Whitney, was in there with me. It was just her and I. I was just quarantined in there. It was right around Thanksgiving time and it was so hard for me. I hadn't had any food or had no water and I was in critical condition. It was just me and my nurse, you know. And I remember reading that and how emotional it was that day. I was so critical then. I didn't know. And I, My daughter's wedding's coming up and I remember my biggest fear was that I would not make her wedding. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to be alive for a wedding. I, I, you know, Whitney's in there. Yes, you are, Kevin. Yes, you are. You're going to survive. You're going to make it. And I don't know how I did, but I did. But that's why I have hope. Because I set all kinds of mini goals for myself when I was in there. You know, my niece's wedding. Go see Roger Hudson at Deer Valley. 
the I'll Call You a Radical, the guy who wrote I'll Call You a Radical, my daughter's wedding coming up, and then the walk for life, ironically, is exactly one year from when I got sick. But if you've listened to me read my first chapter one of The Battle of Cement, you know I've been living this atomic nightmare from a little boy. It affected me so hardcore, so hardcore as a little boy. And then my father dying like he did. I made these before I got cancer. And people say, oh, you spelled there wrong. Oh, really? No, I think you're reading it wrong. I haven't given up on Fukushima, but I'm not some media guy who's just going to, you know, as, as the corporate media and their bullshit, I'm not going to just, you know, go off on when there's nothing to report. I've said everything that could be said. There's some really marquee studies that are getting ready to come out of the Pacific. And I'll get privy to them. I have people that are sending me all kinds of things, and they're going to be coming out. This story is going to go viral big time. Watch. Watch. The California drool on themselves. Let's go watch Justin Bieber get freaking, or somebody get divorced, or, you know, I don't know. It's when it gets in their face, and the plume is coming, and when these studies come in, from what I, you know, I don't know for sure yet, but the indicator I have, they're going to be off the hook. And they're going to scare the living bejesus out of freaking people. Uh, this story hasn't ended. This story is just beginning. So many of you are going to have to walk the walk that I've had to walk. Leukemia. This is AML. This is not chronic leukemia, juvenile leukemia. This is an evil, evil, epic war. As I like to say, you know, one of my vlogging friends that, you know, from Roundtree 7, he got cancer after I got cancer. I says, I'll, he says, do you have any advice for me? And I says, you've been watching my videos. So I put up the clip from Cool Hand Luke. When Luke fights George Kennedy, which that movie is incredible, that clip is talk about art. I says, just watch that. Leukemia is George Kennedy. You are Luke. And it goes on for a very, very long time. The doctors tell me my leukemia treatment alone is going to be three years. As she said to me the other day, you've jumped the big major hurdle, but you're still very, very sick, Kevin. And I had an asshole come to me on YouTube on one of my rants the other day, and he says, all I think you are is a screaming rant. You know, that's all you do. Oh, really? That's all I do? I accomplish more with freaking full of leukemia. My platelet count is 45. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a fucking asshole. Let's see how he fuck let's see what he does with himself while he's full of leukemia. Besides laying in bed and fucking cry to his fat ass fucking wife. Kevin Blanche. Stay tuned.